We're going to be interactive tonight. You can answer down in the comments section, but it'll be interactive. So as we're interactive, I'll try and repeat what you say back. I need somebody, first of all, as you flip open your Bible to Genesis 3.15, Genesis 3.15 is where we're going to start tonight. I need somebody to give me a good, easy to understand definition of prophecy. What's well, a good, easy to understand? And there are no wrong answers, and, and, and I have candy. It's virtual candy for those of you watching, but I have candy. I have candy, virtual candy. Has there ever been a meaner word? That's like sugar-free chocolate. Uh, so uh, just, just holler out, just holler Riley's got his hand, Brandon's got his hand up, Riley. Prediction of something in the future. A prediction of something in the future. And what's, a, what's the difference in a bad prophecy or a false prophecy and a true prophecy? You, you can take that one, Brandon. <laughs> All right, um, so that was a squeal and a hump. Uh, if, if anyone can interpret that for me, we're not in the Pentecostal service. I don't know how to understand that tongue. A true, a true prophecy and a false prophecy would be just simple definition. Anybody help me out? One's right and one's wrong. One's right and one's wrong. I think that's what Brother Glassby said in his unknown tongue there. And uh, yeah, one would be right and would be wrong. And that was the way you knew that a prophet was true, right? What did Proverbs say? Man, this is for extra credit. I need the bowl of candy right there. I won't keep doing this. Um, what, what, when Proverbs said that a, a, true, a false prophet, what was supposed to happen to him? Anyway? Put them to death. Put them to death. Put them to death. And this would just clear out, clear out some of the religious programming channels going on in the United States and South America, right? Because those jokers never, ever get it right, it seems like. I see uh, Brandon's piece of candy and brother, oh, brother Blair and, and all this. And we got a, we got a reward. The labor's worthy of his hire. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. So anyway, so we, we got those things. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. And so this is what we're talking about here. So one of the things that comes up when you're talking about the person of Christ is that, okay, he's supposedly all these kind of things. Is it really accurate? And the, just the amount of effort that goes into trying to disprove um, the birth, excuse me, the birth, the, the fact that the birth of Christ is prophetically accurate is honestly astounding. And I'll say this in all candor, and it's just ignorant. It's just ignorant. An honest examination always points to the fact that you can trust the scriptures. You can trust the prophecy and trust the prophecy trust the prophecy miss allison if you'll plug in the plug there so we're uh um she didn't have the adapter good deal um so as we go forward through this organization is the key to our ministry and uh so so he's <laughs> gonna do this um and, <laughs> This is why we're talking about Zoom now, <laughs> so, before we go live and all those kind of things. So I'll speak loud. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm not that far away. I should be okay. Is it taking the internal light? Yeah, it, it should pick me up. I can go around and get mine real quick. We're, 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 we're okay. Uh, uh, prophecy, squealing, labor-worthy of desire. Prophecy. Uh, please edit these last 30 seconds out, um, Andre. So when we're talking about these things, so I want to give you what I think some of the 10, they're really... A lot. There's a, a really a huge amount. Um, if you look, uh, if you look on any any messianic Jew uh, kind of resource or Jews for Jesus or any of those kind of things, they will have anywhere from forty to sixty that they use as conversation starters. I suggest they're more than that. But I just want to, for time's sake, offer you ten tonight, and I want you to kind of help me. I want us to see the prophecy and see the fulfillment. See the prophecy and see the fulfillment. I, I was a, a, a somebody sent me a, a little a, a video, a, a gospel kind of saying, and, and the whole song was about if you uh, if you feel it, then claim it and claim it and proclaim it. And everybody was getting all worked up, and I thought, well, it's a really catchy song, but it's a really lousy Bible because I felt lots of things that weren't necessarily so. It's not what I feel. It's what I know. It's not even not even. That. It's what the Bible says. There's an old Southern Gospel song. God said it, and I believe it, and that settles it. And it's a great little song. But again, it needs a period there. God said it, 
and put a period through the matter as God said it and put an exclamation point. Me believing it just says something about me. It doesn't really say anything about the word. And so, but I can assure you that you can hold the word up to scrutiny, the prophecies, and find them to be true. Let's start off here in Genesis 3.15. I'm going to give uh, quickly, you're going to help me. I'll read Genesis 3.15, but I need somebody to go to Galatians 4. Really, as many as want to, we can have read tonight. And uh, then somebody take Matthew 1.20 for time. So just go ahead and get there, and it's whoever gets there first. So, so I've got the prophecy labeled with a P. Is that okay with everybody? Allison, you're in college. Is that okay? Um, and then an F would be the fulfillment. Fulfillment. Genesis 3 and verse 15. Genesis 3 and 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The prophecy is that the Messiah, the Savior, the one who would redeem us, would come from where? Would be born of a woman. Would be born of a woman. That is, that is what we call the, 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 the proto-evangelium. That, the, that is the original gospel. That God would send hope through the lineage of this people that he created, the man and the woman, particularly of the woman. So we see this. We see this here. Everybody understand. Not going to be born out of an egg. Not going to drop out of the sky. Not going to be an angel. This is the prophecy that God would come to redeem us this way. Redeem us this way. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Who's got Galatians 4? 4. Go ahead. Yeah. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Made of a woman, made under the law. Made under the law. What's the scripture say? What the scripture say? It was born of a born of a woman. Exactly as prophesied. Matthew 1 20. Again, just go. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Is of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Sorry about that. That was good ventriloquism. Mike opened his mouth and Riley's voice came out. That was excellent. And uh, born of born of a woman. You say, well, that's that doesn't take a lot of effort. Not not sure if you understand. If you're being skeptical here, you're going, well, okay. You know, every 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 human we know is born of a woman. Is everybody with me here so far? Um, so is that that big a deal? Again, I'm going to move up here. He not only says it's going to be born of a woman, you can have faith and confidence in, in, in the credibility of this, but he'd be born of a virgin. Flip over again. We're going to keep moving tonight. Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. I'll read it so it's on the mic here. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What is the sign? What is the sign, anyone? The sign is a miracle or non-miracle? I mean, they say it like that. Miracle. miracle. Why? Why is it a miracle? Everybody help me. Virgin birth. Yeah, virgins, virgins by definition don't have children. They don't become expectant. Um, that, that is, by definition, miraculous and man that'd be a pretty good sign amen uh that's an that's a that's that's a something to look for and to look forward to that is the prophecy and we will call his name emmanuel and again for extra credit i'm out of candy extra credit emmanuel roughly translates into god with man over here I was so surprised by Gilbert and Sullivan Sunday, but it's that crowd over there that's really doing well, too. And, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. All right. Uh, apparently, apparently the Steelers' offensive uh, the receivers are over there. Nobody can catch. And uh, so, so it would be, it's not. No, just funny. It's true. <laughs> We're talking about this again. Excuse me. <clears throat> In his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, he talks about the different words that are used here for virgin. There's a the word, Bethula. 
means just a maiden, but a maiden who is a virgin. There's the word Alma or Alma. And this is the idea of just someone who is of marriageable age that is there. When you go to Matthew one twenty, the word that's used is the combination word in Greek. It's a virgin who was of marriable age. The specificity is amazing. God gets it exactly right. Doesn't want anybody thinking anything untoward here. She's exactly the age that's appropriate, and she's exactly the physical condition that makes it a miracle. And God said that, that the Messiah, that Christ would be born of a virgin, would be born of a virgin. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you fight against Isaiah 7, 14, you end up with only thing it can mean is that a woman who had never been with a man is going to have a baby out of the miracle of God's divine power. Divine power. So the son of woman, excuse me, or the seed of woman, the son, excuse me, born of a virgin, and number three here, the son of God. Psalm chapter 2 in verse 7. Psalm chapter 2 in verse 7. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. As soon as you get it, nod at me or wave at me. Most of you flip it to the next verse. Yeah. Psalm 2, verse number 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This day have I begotten thee. The prophecy here is that the Messiah would be the Son of God. Be the Son of God. In our vernacular, we, we don't really we, we use son of in the last 30 years as part of a pejorative. If someone's a son of something, whatever comes at the end of it is not nice. In the culture, even the Jewish culture and the Greek culture, to be the son of was a statement of equality. We would say, you look just like your mother. You act just like your father. Boy, when I saw you in a distance and heard the voice, I, I just knew that. Some of us have had the experience. Somebody called and gets somebody on the phone, and they start talking, and they realize, oh, I'm talking to the child. I'm talking to the son. I'm talking, not talking to the parent. When he says he's a son of God, it is an equivocation statement that he is absolute deity and others would recognize it. And I've got some of those verses there. Who's got Matthew 3.17? Matthew 3.17. Allison, okay. And I have a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And a voice came from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Again, just because of the way I think, this is the voice of James Earl Jones here. <laughs> is anybody besides me that God has a bass voice? At the best of veritone, right? It's not a tenor. Nod your head if you're with me. Okay, yeah. And I don't know, have any evidence for that. And the voice comes, and then there's the spirit descending like a dove. In other words, cascading, not as a dove. It's a different idea there. Didn't, the Holy Spirit's not a bird, um, no matter how many times we draw it on things. Um, and, he, and he says what? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Unitarians and the Oneness Pentecostals don't know what to do with this verse. I don't, I don't mean anything ugly there uh, to the one that's been a call. I think they're very sincere. But when you, if you've got the Son of God being baptized, follow with me, and you've got God the Father speaking, and you've got the Spirit of God descending like a dove, if you have the obvious evidence of the Trinity, it's really hard to say that there's no Trinity. Nod your head if you want to follow that. Um, and so there's a real unbelievable problem that is here. And they claim to be the son of God. Who's got Mark 3.11? Yeah, Mike. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the son of God. You, thou art the son of God. Who recognized him being the son of God? Amen? Demons. Demons. Demonions. They get it right when flesh and blood get it wrong, don't they? They knew exactly who he was. We call that the they call that the, the people have nothing to gain kind of idea. They could very easily have lied. And here they are compelled to tell the truth. Matthew 26, 63. You may got that one? 
Mr. Glasper, go ahead. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be Christ, the Son of God. Who is accusing him of being the Son of God there? Who is that? High priest. The high priest who wants him what? Dead. Dead. Prophecy. Stated prophecy fulfilled. You can have confidence that Jesus is who he says he is. Not only the seed of woman, but the seed of Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 18. Genesis 22 and verse 18. And if you're watching this, well, I hope that you'll continue to flip in your Bible there. Again, unless you're driving, obviously don't do that. Genesis 22 and verse number 18. The Bible says, And Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stone he had put for his pillow, set up for a pillow. <coughs> Excuse me. That's 28, 18. Let me go to 22, 18. 22:18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed or blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. What great promise is given to Abraham? Father of many nations. Be the father of many nations, but who's going to be blessed because of Abraham? Genesis 22:18. From your children. All nations would be blessed. All nations would be blessed. So you may know that very wonderful, powerful song, the great spiritual song we like to sing about this, these verses. Father Abraham. And what did Father Abraham have? Those of you who didn't grow up in church, this is not as funny to you, but everybody else is kind of smiling. Many Father sons. Abraham had what? Many sons. And many sons had? Father Abraham. And I am one of them. And so are you. hopefully so are you. So let's just praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The years and years I spent in junior church, children's ministries with wiggly children, and we were going to sing Father Abraham. And we're going to march to Father Abraham. We're going to go right arm and left arm and right foot and left foot. We got them all going crazy. I don't know if they ever learned anything spiritual about it, but they got a good workout. Uh, from Father Abraham had many sons. It's not just a nice clever children's song. This is the seed promise. I want you to start working through this. And again, you know, we said this last week, you know, the idea of hope in the Jewish mind was, was a twisted cord. The more loops and twists and ropes that were intertwined, the stronger it is. And the more you can count on it. And the great hope in their mind was visualized as a great multi-corded, multi-threaded rope. To get the first one right, eh, the second one, the third one, now the fourth one, we're going to narrow it down even further. This is what the scripture says, again, thousands of years before Christ is going to be born, that he would be from his lineage. Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, who's got that? Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, just read it. Yeah, Brother Keith, okay. Okay. Book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Son of David, the son of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Not Abraham, and to see where the promise is made, he says not, and to seeds as of many, but as of, oh, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. From way back yonder. Again, this is going to be important, by the way, in Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 4, Abraham's not going to be justified by the promise that was given to him. He's not going to be justified by the fact that he's the father of the Jewish nation. He's going to be right with God because he believed God. It was his faith, and God accounted that to him for righteousness. Father Abraham, who had many sons, was converted, was saved, was justified the same way anybody in 2020 is. By believing in the finished work of Christ on the cross and his literal resurrection that he is who he claimed to be and casting my care with everything that I, my faith with everything that I have on him because I'm going to be saved the same way that Abraham is. And it's all right. It's wonderful to be a Jew, to be an Israelite, but it, salvation is not national. It is individual. And Father Abraham needed it just the same way. Number four, you can have confidence Christ is who he says he is because he fulfilled the prophecy that he would be of the 
seed of Abraham. Still with me tonight? Trying to keep everybody rolling here. Seed of Abraham, son of Isaac. Genesis 21, 12. Genesis 21 and verse number 12. And God said to Abraham, <clears throat> Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of the bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said to thee. It is an unbelievably tumultuous time. The lady that Abraham has had a child with has been sent off for better or for worse to die along with the child in the desert. His wife, Sarah, is unbelievably unhappy. There is marital strife, there is discord, and you add to that the compounding problem of wealth. He's got all kind of servants and he's got all kind of stuff and he's got all kind of animals. He's got enough stuff. He basically can form his own little militia when he needs to and go and rescue his nephews in trouble. He's a man with a small empire and unhappy people living in his house. And he's got an older wife who's about to find out, if not found out, about to realize the promise that she's going to have a baby in old age. Read it again. And because of your bondwoman, your handmaid, your servant, and all that Sarah has said to thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. I will what? I will fulfill my promise about the Messiah through your son, Isaac. Abraham didn't have just one son. God specifically, again, if you've ever run any genealogy, you've ever tried to trace a family history, the degree of specificity that's happening thousands of years out is almost, is almost painstaking to look at. Um, if you're ever interested in the math, I can find it in my files where, um, oh, one of my one of my acquaintances um brother worked at nasa ran the numbers back in the day through with computers it wouldn't be that hard to do it's hard to do now but ran the ran the estimates out just to get it right just to get a few of the prophecies right much less all the prophecies right the the statistical uh, the the, uh, the astronomical figure for the statistical certainty and here it is we've got the son of isaac luke chapter 3 Verse 23, Luke 3, 23. Who wants to read that? Anybody not right to read yet? Okay, Allison, go ahead. Um, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Levi. Read verse 34 as well. Okay. Which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Taro, which was the son of Nacor. You see, sometimes, you ever, you ever like me, you ever reading through all the read through the Bible in a year, you read through some of the Old Testament, you hit those genealogies, you're going, that's a whole lot of begotten and begotten and so and so and so and so. Anybody ever had that? Anybody besides me ever attempted to, to just move through a little bit? There's some interesting vignettes and stories in there, but you're like, there, there's a couple of reasons for the genealogies, but one of them is there's specificity there. <clears throat> Not everybody, but Abraham. Not just Abraham, not just Isaac or an Ishmael, but Isaac. And God continuing to narrow down so that it would be obvious that he is keeping his promise. Not just Isaac, but Jacob. Numbers 24. Numbers 24. Verse 24, flip over in your Bibles there, or go ahead, no, some of you are looking at the other numbers in chapter, excuse me, chapter number 24 and verse 17. Which is a good idea until I realize my hands don't like doing this. Numbers 24. Numbers 24, <clears throat> excuse me, numbers 24 and verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, destroy all 
the children of Sheth. And we have here part of the prophecy that the Messiah would come as a warrior. And he would come and be part and part of the lineage and a son of Jacob. Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 20, that we already read that. Again, Isaac and Jacob, the son of Jacob. He's not only that, but he is the, <coughs> pardon me, he's part of the tribe of Judah. Part of the tribe of Judah. And let me just give a little pause here. Say, has, did Jesus come and take out all of Israel's enemies? Nope. The first time. I got people shaking an affirmative and people shaking a negative, and I got other folks just kind of popping their neck. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, yeah, Brandon's signaling for a slider. Uh, there is a time coming when the Messiah will do what? He's going to come and clean house, isn't he? There's a time coming. The battle that is to come is so bad. It has become the synonym for all kinds of awful things, right? Starts with an A and ends with an Erman Gooden. <laughs> and not just one Armageddon, but there's at least Armageddon part one and part two, right? There'll be a battle at the end of all things. The bloodshed is so bad, the writer of Revelation recording it says it's up to what? To the bit of a, on a bridle on a horse. Can you imagine the devastation? And the body count of the war to end all wars. World War One wasn't it was as far as an international war. This will not only be an international war. This is going to be a supernatural war that is to come. And by the way, the conclusion is foregone. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one with victory on his lapel. He on his sash. He is the one who rides in. He is the one who takes care of things. And this prophecy looks ahead to that and says he will be from the uh, from the tribe. Excuse me, he will be, or pardon me, from not the son of Jacob, but of the tribe of Judah. Go to Judah, Genesis chapter forty nine, Genesis forty nine, verse number ten. I want to make sure I'm on time here. <clears throat> Genesis forty nine and verse ten. This is opinion, and that's all it is because I am not an expert on the German liberals. I'm just not. I don't. I'm not. I'm not for a couple of reasons. Um, but my opinion is one of the reasons that the true liberals, the true higher critics, attack the scripture, attack the inspiration of scripture, the infallibility of the scripture. One of the reasons I spend so much time in Genesis is the same reason we've spent so much time in Genesis for the last 20 minutes. Because if you knock down Genesis and knock down the prophecies about Christ, then you have knocked out most of the Bible. If you can undercut the foundation, you can under and then the rest of the house. It's like that silly game with uh, uh, with uh, with birds and pigs, angry birds. Just once you knock down a little, the whole thing comes a tumbling. And so when we look here, Genesis 49, verse 10, would he be of the tribe of Judah, verse 10? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh common unto him shall the gather shall be, or unto him shall the gathering of the people be. I said it wrong twice. Gathering of the people be. He's going to come from Judah. Again, we're getting so specific here. So specific. Somebody's got... Uh, Again, we read these, Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Again, he's from the son of Jacob. He's the son of Isaac. He is from the tribe of Judah. The specificity, the multiplied millions. If you flip it around here, let me just help you. Is anybody in here, um, anybody in here have an adult friend who was adopted? Anybody in here have an adult friend who was adopted? Your adult friend ever try and figure out birth parents, birth mother, birth parents? Maybe they knew, maybe they never knew. When they don't know, it is an unbelievable mystery sometimes. Things are sealed. They're trying to figure stuff out. It really, particularly years back, things are more computerized and stuff now. To call this, see the woman, Son of Abraham, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Judah. 
and get it right is, is, is absolutely amazing. And that's the right word. It ought to produce awe in us. It'd be of the tribe of Judah. It'd be of the family line of Jesse. We're switching gears a little bit. And now we're talking about David and Jesse here. David and Jesse. Isaiah 11 in verse number one. Isaiah 11 in verse number one. Let's flip over there. Isaiah 11 in verse number one. <clears throat> Maybe it feels good to flip the pages of the scripture or to click around on your phone. Maybe it's just you know, just helpful to visit these things. Isaiah 11, 1. If we're not real careful, we end up being New Testament kind of people. And there's so much we're missing sometimes. The old, and there came forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. If you notice there in your Bible, the branch is capitalized. Anybody see that? Branch is capitalized. It's interesting, it's playing on words, and I had to kind of look this up again to remind myself what it is. <clears throat> Kyle and Della Delich in their commentary says, out of the stump, walking in the woods and you see a stump and something's growing out, out of the stump of Jesse, that part of the royal family, it's no longer a great house, it's no longer a great kingdom it's just it's just a stump out of the stump comes forth a twig which promises to supply the place of the trunk and the crown and down below and the roots covered with earth and rising only a little above above it there comes and here's the next word a fresh green shoot. Out of the, a rod, a shoot, out of the stem, lily bitty branch, out of the dead stump, almost dead stump, will come. Everybody shook their head because the glory of David and Solomon was gone. But God's going to keep his promise. And from the lineage of Jesse is going to come the Messiah. Not only that, we'd be from the house of David. House of David. You're there in Isaiah. Go over to Jeremiah 23. I got about six minutes. Jeremiah 23. This is interesting. This is boring. It's okay. You with me here? Jeremiah 23. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise up David, a righteous branch. Here we go. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. And we have the classic passage here. We have first coming and second coming. First coming looks, looks just like the second coming. And what we don't see, and we turn it on the side and see the angle, we don't see the time span in between. Read it again. The days come, says the Lord, I'll raise up David, a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. I will raise him up, and now we've got the space of time. And when he comes back, what's he going to do? He's going to reign, he's going to execute justice and judgment, prosperity. So that's an incorrect prophecy. No, it's just looking at everything all at once. Other scriptures spread it out and divide it out. And when he looked at it, he saw all of this. By the way, that's the same hope, isn't it? He needed to come save us from our sins, and then he's going to come save us from ourselves. He's going to come, and he's going to set up in the earthly kingdom and rule and reign. He'll be of the family line of David, a family of Jesse. He'll be of the house of David, the house of David. And there's all kinds of scripture. There. Somebody's got Revelation 22, 16. I didn't put it on the board. Revelation 22, 16. Somebody grab that one real quick. Revelation 22, 16. We'll look at number 10, and we're going to call it a win. Revelation 22, 16. If you got it, read it. I, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. I am the green shoot coming out of the stump of Jesse and the twig that's growing up out of the roots there. I am the green tender branch. I am the one who has come that will be, by the way, the rod of iron to rule and reign. The one that's not really impressive, somebody unbelievably impressive is coming from. And 
So we have that. And then the last one here, we have the last one. Last one, it's going to be born in Bethlehem. I moved kind of from the relational to the geographic and some other specificities. And again, there, there's lots and lots of prophets. I just want to give you 10 this evening. Matthew, you know, excuse me, Micah 5 2. Micah 5 2. Let's all see. This is one of, really almost becomes one of the Christmas ones. Matthew, Micah 5 2. Micah 5 2. If you see Nahum, you're really close. If you see Obadiah, you're really close. Micah 5 2. Micah 5 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. You can't just be talking about an earthly king. The earthly kings aren't from everlasting. This is, this is the Messiah prophesied. With specificity, if you take it out, if you take the hundreds of thousands, the millions of people that are alive, and you keep whittling down this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and you go, that's an amazing kind of thing. Then God just, for good measure, starts going, hey, let me help you. Out of the hundreds of thousands of places, I'm going to whittle it down to this one. And I'm going to make sure that the guy's going to give a decree for a census just at the right time so that everybody's on the road at the right time and he's right at the right place at the right time so he fulfills prophecy. Only God does that. And you can have confidence. He's born at Bethlehem. He's born at Bethlehem. Bethlehem means, means house of bread. Matthew Henry said, isn't it fitting that the place called House of Bread would be where the bread of life would be born. Ten confidences, ten fulfilled prophecies, ten out of uh, easily 60, 70 we could talk about this evening. Ten ways you can have confidence. Again, somebody says, true guesses, et cetera, et cetera. You need computers that didn't exist and a network that was untenable to even get close to pulling this off if it's a Sharaf. It stands up to historical scrutiny. It stands up to scientific verification. What God has said, he accomplished. By the way, and he's not done yet. The beauty of all this is that he's not done. And the same way, the same God who came before will come again and he will completely fulfill what he intends to do as Messiah and set up rule and reign on the earth. You can have confidence, confidence in the prophecies, of scripture, the amazing gifts, amazing songs, and the amazing stories. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us tonight. Help us this evening to love you all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. To have confidence in the word. Help those, Lord, as they're they're reading the New Testament through or trying to do some extra reading in December. All those, Lord, who are even uh, thinking about uh, doing extra for our Christmas offering, helping us bless our missionaries. And, and Lord, I, I just pray you do that. And Lord, for those who are concerned, maybe even confused, that Christianity is about feelings, Christianity is about crossing your fingers, it is the refuge of the mentally infirm or any of the other uh, awful things that are said. Father, I, I pray they know that, that it, is the, it is the domain of those who push hard, who try and pull it apart, and it stands up to scrutiny. It is all at once miraculous and marvelous. Thank you that the sign was fulfilled and the virgin gave birth and bore a son and his name was called Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for ascending. Thank you that you will come again. We love you and we praise you. We ask in your son's name. And amen.